what's going on in this gray and rainy day here in the great state of Michigan? <laughs> um, man, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you to everybody for the feedback. You guys are the ultimate motivator. Uh, the draft party, you know, at Sword Eagle Casino, man. I just want to thank everybody involved. But the feedback on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and of course in the comments section of the draft party was, I mean, just absolutely amazing and, and inspiring. It, it gives us that juice to keep pushing even harder. We're going to make these things happen more and more often for you guys. So the work behind the, the work behind the scenes will continue. Uh, you know, maybe a Greg Kelser part two. Maybe in the works, maybe, maybe, you know. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, um, once again, just thanks to everybody that was involved. Uh, to my co-host, man, to Herman Moore, his team. Thank you, everybody. Um, so, a lot going on in the NBA world right now. Uh, Summer League is slowly approaching, man. We are right around the corner from that. Uh, July 3rd, Summer League begins. Of course, we all want to see what what uh, our rooks can do in the summer league, especially Sasser, man. A lot of implications on, on you know, this guy, man. It's, you know, we we happy to have uh, a sorry too, but Sasser is definitely getting that buzz. Four-year player out of college, played well. Uh, out of four-year players, I expect them to be good. I expect them to be good. You've been in college for four years. Some people didn't even get an opportunity to go to college. You know what I'm saying? So having that experience for four years to me, it's not a negative. To me, it's actually a positive. It means that you will be able to, to step in and you'll be more ready for what the NBA may bring. So obviously it's gonna be a learning experience for the young man. Um, you know, the, the NBA is much bigger, faster, stronger. So we'll see, man. Summer League is the beginning. That's the first step to see what our risks can do. And I'm looking forward to it. I am really looking forward to Summer League. So, um, but when you look around the league, a lot going on. Damian Lillard asking out, you know, want to go to Miami. Um, John Collins to the Jazz. That happened today. So, there's still some movement going on. But when it comes to the Detroit Pistons, Troy Weaver is definitely, he makes, he's making calls. But he, he's taking his time. He's doing his due diligence like he always does. Uh, with Dame a little accent out of Portland, I think the possibilities of us landing someone like Jeremy Grant is, you know, just that much higher. Um, Cam Johnson, that's the name that's going to continue to be put out there. That's one of the, the three players that I wouldn't mind having. Um, Cam Johnson, I think Brooklyn's asked for, what, around like 90 mil? So if the Pistons come with, you know, a certain number, 100 mil, 110, um, you know, Cam Johnson, 25, 26 million a year. That's for, for his talents and what he offer, man, that, that's that's good. You know what I'm saying? So, um, man, if the Pistons can make that offer or if they're willing to, do it. Do it, man. Or if you decide you want to go to the Jeremy Grant route, you do that. Bring Jeremy back. I just want somebody on that wing that can shoot, but play defense. Defense is the thing. Remember, I told you guys this. Defense is the thing. We need defense. I, you know, shooting, that's a plus. You know, we got some shooters on this team. Our our backcourt, uh, K, Ivy, I expect them to shoot well next season um, or, in, or improve, I'll say that. Isaiah Stewart, I expect him to take another step forward. You got Boyan, you got Burks on the team currently, right now. There's some shooting. There's some, some point scoring here. We just haven't had opportunity to see them play together. So, um, you know, I'm going to trust Troy Weaver in this process and, and let him assess and say, hey, this is where we are right now, so this is where we can go. And, um, you know, we'll see where he goes with that. But in the meantime... You know, it's just, it's our name is going to be attached to a lot of free agents out there. It's going to be attached to a lot of free agents. So I will say, you know, let Troy do his thing. Don't get too attached to anybody when it comes to free agency. Because you know Troy Weaver always goes a whole different direction. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So save yourself the time, man. Um, but, you know, bringing in a guy like Cam, bringing in a guy... 
Jeremy Grant, rather. Oh, you got Harrison Barnes out there. You got Tobias Harris. That's been another one that this has been uh, mentioned with. You got some guys out there. So we'll see what happened with that situation. But that roster should be very interesting going into next season. Um, of course, we you know we we look forward ahead past summer camp into the camp. You know, when guys are um, ready to go out there and get themselves established, see what guys worked on and everything. So that's a little ways away. But right now we got form, we got summer league to look forward to. Now, back to summer league. I want to say this. Ladies and gentlemen, the summer league is not just for first and second year players. Not even just third year players. We've seen a 39 year old rookie play. <laughs> in the summer league. We've seen vets that's been around the league for a long time. Play. Remember Jared Allen was in summer league? Listen, man, don't knock a player because they play in the summer league. I've seen a lot of flack out there about Wiseman being put on that list. We haven't even got the official list yet. But just the fact that people seen that uh, rumored list, a lot of flack about that. He needs as much playing and, and reps that he can get. So what's the difference of you getting excited about these dudes in the gym playing pickup ball, but it's a problem if they're playing in a summer league in a professional setting? Make that make sense. Please, somebody, make that make sense. If it's up to me, everybody need to get their ass out there at least one game. At least one or two games. Get your ass out there. And go out there and support your, the rookies that you do got on your team. And, and, and <laughs> you know, evaluate from there. Because, like I said, I, it's like, bro, all of these little personal preferences we have sitting at home on our couches. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To say, hey, he shouldn't be this and that. Bro, I don't care where you play at. Work on your game. If you play on this, in the summer league and you a 10-year veteran, you think I care? That make it better for everybody else. Because guess what? The veteran's experience is going to spread. That's a plus, not a negative. That's why Jared Allen did it with his young teammates. And you see how they came out. Think. For once. Stop listening to... Nah, man. <laughs> Boy... If it's a theory put out there by social media or on media, period, y'all believe it. Y'all believe it. Just like every year you hear the league is this type of league, it's that type of league. Oh, it's a small ball league. It's this league. It's big man's a, or, or our big men are dying. When we just seen two of them in a, in a, the, the top two of the MVP candidacy. So, <laughs> or or <laughs> uh, you just need shooters, just bunch of thousand shooters on your team. Which that doesn't work either. Because one thing, even when people tried to duplicate Golden State, one thing they couldn't understand is Golden State had a solid bench and they were a top defensive team. Top defensive team. Look at the champions and go back and just, just go to a decade and look where they were defensively. Your team has to be balanced. You've seen a balanced Denver Nuggets team win this year. They didn't have a bunch of super high-flying athletes everywhere. They had a couple. One or two. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It didn't take... Jokic is the most unathletic, brilliant basketball player I've ever seen in my life. He literally is the most fundamental basketball player that I've ever seen. Nothing that Jokic does excites me at all. What excites me is the fact that he plays basic, fundamental basketball. A big should be able to pass. You should be able to pass the basketball as a big. <laughs> so it's not like he just posting people down and turn around and shack dunking on people. He's beating you here. He's using his teammates. He plays team based on the situation. He's smart. Another player uh, considered one of the best in the league, Luka Doncic. Not athletic bone in his body. This man drink beers before games, damn near. But he's smart. 
he thinks the game. So all these little theories, oh, he's not an athlete. Oh, he's that. Oh, he's this. Oh, shut up. Shut up. You don't play in the league. Be quiet. You got to this. You got to that. Only thing you got to do is fit together. Period. A player does not have to be up to your standards in order for your team to be successful. They have to fit. You can have a thousand scores on your team, Houston, and it doesn't work. Certain players need to have certain parts. You can't put a car together. You can't put a Dodge Charger together using all scat pack parts. You have to have different components that fit together to make the engine room. <laughs> like, bro, we should know that. Why do I have to say that to the, the, to the Detroit Pistons fan base? Why do I have to say that to y'all of anybody? When we just had a bunch of guys to consistently go to conference championship and, and win and, and win a, won an NBA title. Y'all should know more than anybody. Pistons fans and Spurs fans should know more than anybody. But for some reason, I have to say that. I understand it for the younger people, man, that's only been basketball fans for like four or five years. I get it. But, bro, some of the people that be commenting in my, my comments sometimes, I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? So, basketball is not a hard game to figure out. It's not. It's really not. <laughs> you just have to, as a GM, I, I, I challenge you to put a team together where the components fit together. Period. We've seen stars together that don't work together because the team is not is not properly built together. You've seen two stars that did, that don't work together. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. <laughs> so, um, you know, like I said, the, the ultimate goal is to be a winning team for, you know, a sustainable amount of time. Not just a blip on the radar. So let Troy Weaver do his thing. Continue to trust Troy. That's all. You can agree with me or not. I really don't care. Y'all know I don't care. I tell y'all in the comments I don't care. Bye. So it is what it is. That's just my opinion. So with that said, man, um, let's just get ready for summer league and, and see where the Pistons go when it comes to this uh, free agency. And uh, yeah, peace, man. Shoe stones, culture, my culture, though. You see what they talk about in here. What's up, little dog? You good? Y'all got something here for me? I'm talking about exclusive. They got all the dunks. How many dunks they got? Something like these. Y'all got a little vibe in here. They buying shoes, selling shoes, sleep. Dude, it feels like the culture. They dunking on people. Oh, they doing TikTok. They looking out for the kids. Oh man, this is great, man. Oh, they got all the races working here. It, it just, just really feels like, like the culture. Look for black owned shoe stores. Shoe stores. Shoe stores. Shoe stores. Shoe stores. Shoe stores. To get some real drip at, come up here to Culture Detroit, man. That's what the streets been missing. Welcome home, fam.